Another method to get an OH in a double bond is the hydroboration oxidation. In this method, what happens is that we start with an alkene and then we add, we add the BH3 across the double bond and then we have to convert that BH2 into an OH via an oxidation. The hydroboration is this first step in where we add the hydroborate across the alkene and then the second step will be the oxidation in which we convert the BH2 to the OH. So here we have some examples. The first we have the alkene here and we add the H on one side and the BH2 on the other side and then by using the peroxide and OH- we end up with the OH on the other side. And here in the BH3 gets added to the cyclohexane, we get the same result and we get an H and an OH. Because the BH3, the, the H and the BH2 come from the same molecule, they will come from the same side and this will be a syn type of reaction. The, the molecule, the BH3, approaches the alkene from the same side and at the same time it gets the H and it gets the BH2. So that's why we get a syn addition. The BH3 is very reactive, so usually we uh, get it in the form of B2H6 or it's sold in the lab also as a complex with tetrahydrofuran. So the first step in the hydroboration, as I was saying before, is by using any of these reagents that uh, we can find or other that I will talk about later, uh, what will happen is that the H will be added on one side and the BH2 will be added on this, the other side, but both of them will come from the same side because the BH3 approaches the molecule, the alkene, from the same molecule. So what it's breaking here is the pi bond on the alkene, the one that it's reacting in an addition reaction. So you see this is what I was talking about. The molecule, the BH3, comes and approaches the alkene from the same side and it forms this transition state in where both, uh, both molecules are involved. So we have the two carbons here that uh, be bear the double bond and also the BH3. So we have this uh, four member ring. The pi bond and the so the pi bond is, are broken and then two new sigma bonds are formed. Those two new sigma bonds are these ones right here. And that's why we talked about a syn addition. This is the first step of the hydroboration mechanism. Now, the second step of that hydroboration mechanism is the um, oxidation of the BH2 into the OH. There's a retention of configuration, so that is not going to change. And so the overall result, you don't have to know the mechanism for the second part, is the conversion of the BH2 into the OH. What is interesting about this whole reaction is that because the BH2 is so large, and I'm going to go back, the BH2 is large right here, it's always going to... Um, go into the less substituted side. So if we have an alkene where one side is more substituted than the other one and we have the BH3, um, remember this is BH3, right? It's approaching the alkene. The boron is larger so it's going to approach the, the it's going to position itself in the uh, carbon that is less substituted and the hydrogen will go to the more substituted one. In this case, in this example, we don't have a more substituted site, but in the one that I'm showing, yes, it is. So what is going to happen is that once these, the first part of the reaction, the hydroboration happens, we will end up with the BH2 on this side and the hydrogen on the other side. Now, once the oxidation step occurs, we will end up with the OH in the anti-Markovnica position that's the less substituted side of the alkene. So that's what it's particular about the hydroboration, that it's a thin addition, as I mentioned here, but also that will give us the anti-Markovnikov product, the anti-Markovnikov alcohol, without the possibility 
of rearrangement because we don't go through a carbocation and if we don't go through a carbocation there is no possibility of rearrangement so here I have one example and we can talk about it so that's exactly what I was saying so notice that sometimes in the reactions you will see a product um, a reagent on top a reagent at the bottom but in this case this is important that we have a one and a two that means that first we do the the top uh, step and then we do the bottom one when you don't see that one and that two what it means is that we have one reaction and sometimes we see uh, sodium ethoxide and ethanol right so what it means is that everything goes into the same pot but when we have one first and then this second one um, that means that the reaction is actually two steps and that's important because um, if you mix the top and the bottom all at once then the reaction will not proceed as we will expect it but now to the hydroboration step the hydroboration step, remember that the, uh, this BH3 will approach the double bond and it will position itself in a way where the BR is going to go closer to the less substituted carbon. So this is how it's going to position and then this one is how it's going to position. So as I said, you don't have to memorize the mechanism, but I find it quite helpful to remember how it goes to not have to uh, rely on my memory. Right? So if I remember that the BH2 is going to be positioned on the more substituted side, instead of simply memorizing that BH3 is going to give me the answer, Markovnikov, um, then if my memory uh, flakes, then I'm not going to have um, the problem because I can go through the mechanism if, even if I don't know every single detail. So now uh, the intermediate that I'm going to get is the alkene is no longer there. Now I have an H there. I have the BH2 here and the methyl there. Okay, so that's the first step. And remember that this is a syn addition. So both of them will come from the same side. If it helps you, you can put uh, two wedges or two dashes because uh, for, for you to remember, even though this, these molecules are not um, chiral okay so this is just for you to remember that this is a syn addition but remember that these molecules are not chiral because in order to be chiral they have to be connected to four different groups okay now the second step remember is this oxidation step in which using peroxide and OH minus we will substitute the BH2 by uh, OH and so this will happen like this right and remember if i'm showing those um, wedges is because i want to remember that both of them come from the same side but it wouldn't be correct because uh for example this is not a chiral center right so this is a sin and anti markovnikov reaction but um, as I said, uh, BH3 is a gas, so we have other sources of uh, BH that we can use in the lab. One of them is going to be this large uh, cycle, cycle cyclic molecule, and it's called 9BBM. The result is the same one. So it's so big that it will only give us the less substituted um, OHs, but that's the same that we were saying with the BH3. It's just that it's a different source of uh, BH3. And as for the ratio chemistry of the hydroboration, so this we've been talking about it, instead of getting the Markovnikov product in which the BH2 will approach the more substituted side, the BH2 is going to end up in the less substituted side. So this is how um, we will get the anti-Markovnikov product. I've talked extensively about it in the previous slides. Also, we can explain that regioselectivity, selectivity, instead of using sterics, we could use um, elect electronics, right? So these are all deltas that we're not seeing here. So if, if we approach the HBH2 
um, as um, with the BH2 in the more in the less substituted side and the H on the more substituted side. Remember that that delta plus the is going to, that carbon is going to have a higher um, um, positive character because it has one extra substituent that it's donating and so that is making it more stable, right? The CH3 is going to stabilize that delta plus charge, right? Because remember alkyl groups are electron donating so it's going to stabilize the delta plus. If on the contrary we put the BH2 on the other side, what's going to happen in, is that this delta plus is not going to have that extra um, uh, stabilization from the alkyl groups. So that's why we can explain this regioselectivity of the BH2 going to the less substituted side using electronics, not just using uh, esterics as we did before. And here we have the summary of hydroboration oxida oxidation reaction. So we, what happens is that first we will add the H and the BH2 in one step. They come from the same side and that's how we get that syn addition. We cannot get rearrangements. And then the second step is going to be the oxidation in where we substitute the BH2 for the OH minus. Remember that the OH group is going to end up in the less substituted carbon, so that's the anti-Markovnikov uh, product, and there's a syn addition, and the OH at the second step will replace the BH2. This reaction, as usual, has been used in, um, in, in natural product synthesis, and so here we start with a double bond, and for, if you look at the final product, we want to get the alcohol here instead of having it here and so that's why we need to use BH3 or the hydroboration method to end up with the alcohol in that end uh, carbon 